All right. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, <clears throat> let me let me issue out a thank you to all who have made, made, made it a time to join us today. Um, I'm so much grateful and happy to share with you guys uh, this particular <clears throat> um, educational content. I think uh, today marks the introductory aspect. I wish I could share, uh, I mean, uh, a video of myself, but then uh, the network is not really stable. So let's just manage the faceless like that and then uh, use the auditory aspect. So today we're going to learn about um, the DREP. And uh, for this particular day being the introductory aspect, I just want us to touch on the glossary and uh, some terminologies. And then uh, hopefully in the next four or five weeks to come, we are going to dive deeper into the uh, actual stuff when, when we say DREP, um, as far as uh, 6094 and then catalyst is concerned. Um, next slide, please. So today, like I said, we are looking at the appendix, which is basically the glossary of um, the whole DREP uh, initiative. Uh, I believe we, we have all heard about, uh, or we've all heard the term DREP, 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 and you know, sometimes people are wondering what exactly is DREP. You know, like, you know, if, if you are to break it down, DREP uh, basically means decentralized representative. Yeah. And uh, it is more like a shorthand Right for the delegate representative that we talk about in the catalyst community and also with the C sixty ninety four uh, implementation. So in the documentations, we define DREP as a person or entity who is given the voting power uh, by way of delegation from other wallets. And then we also have a delegator under DREP. So the, dele the delegator basically is a person or the entity who decides to delegate their voting power to a DREP. And that for now I could say is all of us because we are all you know, probably holding a certain amount of ADA that uh, sometime to come, we probably might um, delegate this ADA to some DREPs, uh, typically WADA DREP, so that they vote on proposals on our behalf. We also have uh, the ADA holder, which also refers to the person or the entity who has uh, an amount of ADA in their um, wallet. So like right now, you know, voting is ongoing for Fund 12. And uh, if, if you want to vote, you need to have at least 500 ADA threshold. And, uh, uh, you know, during a snapshot, you know, if you have that amount of money in your wallet, you know, you get a chance to participate in the voting. So I'm, I'm pretty much sure the majority of us here are ADA holders. And, uh, you know, so we fall under this particular category. So we are also going to, I mean, uh, meet uh, SIP1694. I know we have had several workshops before and some of you probably know um let me just confirm this i'm speaking english so let me just choose english and then see yeah and some of us got a chance to actually participate in the um, cip 1694 um workshops and it was it was marvelous so we're going to meet that again uh so what basically is the cip 1694 it, it seeks to actually introduce a new on-chain governance model for cardano and then uh you know the cip basically wants to advance the current governance system and ensuring every ADA holder has a voice in Cardano's governance. So initially, we used to have, uh, uh, you know, our, our own style of governance in the, in the Cardano community, but now, you know, things are growing even further and um, from, I mean, of being officiated and all. So we need to have a certain um, stream of constitution to ensure that whatever it is that we are doing, it, 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 it's in line with the documentations and, and meeting the um the vision of uh, cardano at large so the proposal basically outlines um, a tricameral model consisting of stick stick pool operators which is a spus we also have the delegated representatives which i've already uh, mentioned about the DREPs, and we're also going to have constitutional committee um, i believe some of you have seen it um around i mean in this week and then they all have their own distinct resp responsibilities and roles and Actually, anybody here can actually decide to join any that they want to join. And in, some of them come with uh, prerequisite requirements, like um, hardware requirements and software requirements. Some of them also come with technical knowledge and know-how. Some of them too, you don't really need any of these. You just have to join and then make uh, your contribution and make your way through, that, through to the top. Next slide, please. I'm sure we're not gonna have the French version. So I would invite um, Laurentine to translate. Um, next slide, Megan. Yeah. Um, Laurentine.
Yes, I'm here. Am I supposed to translate? Yes. It's very it's intense, so I can't. You can't. Oh, it's yeah. just bon. Come on, on a un peu réécrit tout ah, ça en français. On a, on a, okay, d'accord, je vais le faire. Yes, yes we will. Et si ça tu as des questions, Laurentine, tu peux aussi poser des questions en clarifiant aussi. Ça marche, pas de souci. Ok, donc je commence par, par ça, non? Euh, le glossaire, là. Oui. Voilà, donc euh, Nana Safo est en train de nous donner une introduction sur euh, le, le, le D-Rep. Et il se disait que depuis un certain temps, on parle de D-Rep, mais euh, les gens se demandent peut-être ce que c'est. Donc, dire c'est juste une abréviation pour dire euh, représentant délégué. Bon, c'est une personne physique ou morale ayant reçu le pouvoir de vote euh, euh, délégué par d'autres personnes, ou bien par d'autres portefeuilles. Et nous avons également le mot délégant. C'est les personnes physiques ou morales qui décident de déléguer leurs fonds ou bien leur pouvoir de vote à un direct. Et un détenteur d'État, comme vous le savez, c'est toute personne physique ou morale disposant d'un montant de, de crypto-monnaie euh, et d'un de, 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 certain montant d'État, quoi. Et nous avons le CIP 1694, CIP, CIP 1694, euh, qui introduit un modèle de gouvernance euh, en chaîne pour Cardano. Et, 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 et si j'ai bien entendu, euh, euh, Nana Safo est en train de dire que euh, auparavant, les, 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 les différents rues avaient leur, forme, leur, leur propre délégation, leur propre, euh, je veux dire, euh, gouvernance, mais depuis un certain temps, ce n'est plus le cas. Donc, ceci vise à améliorer le, 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 le système qui est en cours, le système de gouvernance qui est en cours pour assurer que chaque détenteur d'EDA ait au moins une voix dans la gouvernance de Caravano. On peut passer, we can move to the next slide. Okay, uh, thanks, Laurentine, for that translation. So, um, you know, I had made mention of governance actions. And, you know, take note, these are terms that we're actually going to meet in our subsequent um, meetings. So, you, 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 you want to, I mean, uh, uh, befriend them so that when we meet them, you know, you don't find yourself um, wanting, trying to understand what we are talking about. It is a bit technical, so... It is good for you to get it right from the beginning before we even, I mean, transcend to, I mean, the, the next session, which are going to be very intense. So now we, we are going to look at governance actions, uh, and it is basically an on-chain event triggered by a transaction. That can be triggered triggered by, I mean, any other holder, actually. That is either you or me. We can all trigger, uh, what do you call it, um, a governance action. And uh, these actions also have uh, expiration periods. Which means that uh, after a certain time, you know the actions are going to expire. Being it, uh, you know, you've uh, you've voted on it or you've not voted on it, it's going to expire after after some time. And uh, afterwards, it cannot be enacted anymore. So uh, that is it. And uh, any other holder, like I said, can submit a governance action for a vote on chain. And then once the action is recorded on the ledger, voters must submit voting transactions. So that is where the power of the DRFs will come in and uh, direct um, voters will also come in from there. Uh, we're going to also meet something called metadata anchor. And uh, in the context of 1694, the metadata anchors are a mechanism to attach contextual data to an on-chain governance artifact. And, uh, you know, this basically has to do with, for instance, um, if, if you're creating a Facebook account, you know, at some point in time, you'll be asked to provide details of yourself, like update your profile with your with your information and all. So this is um, the crypto style of actually updating your profile on the blockchain ecosystem. So we're here, you know, you have the, uh, you have it, it, it includes a UI or pointing to metadata plain text, which basically has a hash of the plain text metadata hosted at the metadata URL. And the metadata URL plain text you're talking about, basically is going to contain your, your profile and, you know, for delegators to actually delegate to you as a DREP, they, they will have to read this profile to ensure that indeed you meet or you'll be able to execute the work when given the chance to do so. So it is going to be very critical when you are setting up your DREP account. I mean, to become a DREP, it is, it is going to be very important for you to pay attention to this metadata uh, anchor part of things. And then the hash can be used to verify the integrity of the metadata hosted at the URL. 
And then this can be attached to on-chain DREP registration to allow DREP to share profile information hosted off chain, like I've already explained. And then such metadata should conform to the structure defined by SIP0100, which is a governance uh, metadata for subsequent um, CIPs. I believe the link will be shared later so you can um, go through if you want to actually have a read. It is quite um, detailed over there. Um, next slide, please. Okay, Laurentini. D'accord, donc, uh, il, uh, 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 Sam, uh, Nana Safo disait que uh, c'est important pour nous de connaître ces choses au préalable parce que uh, lorsqu'on va commencer la formation, on va entrer dans des moments, dans des, des sessions très, très intenses et c'est bien pour chacun de maîtriser déjà ces expressions techniques, ces thèmes techniques-là. Et nous avons parlé d'action de, de gouvernance qui est une action euh, de gouvernance, comme le nom l'indique. Et, et c'est un événement en chaîne déclenché par une transaction. Et les actions de gouvernance ont une période d'expiration, ont une période d'expiration après laquelle l'action ne peut plus être mise en, en, en œuvre. Et il a précisé que tout détenteur d'EDA peut soumettre une action de gouvernance à un vote de chaîne. Une fois l'action enregistrée sur le registre distribué, les électeurs soumettent des transactions de vote. Il y a également ce qu'on appelle euh, entre de, de métadonnées. Et dans le contexte de la, de, 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 du CIP 1694, euh, ce sont, il s'agit d'un mécanisme permettant d'attacher les données contextuelles aux, aux, aux artefacts fact, de gouvernance en chaîne. Et ces éléments comprennent un lien pointant vers euh, les métadonnées en texte clair et un euh, hachage des métadonnées en texte clair également hébergé sur le lien des métadonnées en question. Et le hachage peut être utilisé pour vérifier l'intégrité euh, des métadonnées hébergées sur euh, le lien et ces métadonnées peuvent être euh, attachées à des enregistrements de DREP sur la chaîne pour permettre au DREP de partager des informations de profil hébergé en dehors de la chaîne. Donc, ces métadonnées doivent être conformes à la structure définie de la norme ou des sites ultérieurs. Merci. OK. So, um, slow but sure, we are getting there. I believe this is the final um, closure that we are going to look at. So there are some more SIPs that have actually um, come into play. And uh, we have SIP 30 and we also have SIP uh, 95. And I think uh, with the DREP initiative, you know, we're going to refer sometimes to, I mean, some elements from these um, uh, constitutional implementations. So we need to um, at least get ourselves um, abreast with what they mean and then what they were focused on. So if you look at SIP uh, 30, for instance, uh, it defines communication between web-based tax and Cardano wallets. This is a bit technical. I mean, I believe those who are more into the technical side of the Cardano ecosystem, you know, you, you probably understand what I mean by web-based tax and then what the Cardano wallets are. I believe we all know what Cardano wallets are, but you know, when we talk about web-based tax, I'm sure those who are doing the development are those ones that, are, that can actually relate with it. And then the, the API offers base um, generic functionality to allow dApps, which are decentralized applications to query wallet information, such as wallet balance, network connection, and ETXOs owned. So you realize that whenever you open your wallet, um, your wallet uh, gets to sync. And when it syncs, it shows you your current balance. And you know sometimes uh, even with something like, uh, I think it's your, uh, Eternal and URL for now, when you are using it, they are able to show you um, the current ADA price as compared to, I mean, USDT. So this, this is the API that actually supports all of these functionalities on your um, wallet that you see beautiful like that. And then the SIP, 16, uh, SIP 95 uh, extends the, the functionality of the SIP 30 to add specific support for governance functionality. And then this allows sharing of DREP identifying keys between wallets and DAPs to allow DAPs to identify users who have registered as DREPs on chain. And this is very important because um, in the DREP implementation, we are going to have uh, something we call um, cyber attacks where people tend to actually create 
multiple developer accounts and operate them on their own. So like you 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 have one person just operating about five different developer accounts, which is uh which is not really good for the community, right? So um day serve 95 is actually going to help us share the um identification in case we're able to verify I mean uh, how many DRFs are actually uh, uh registered with um you know one account or something so that we, we, we get to avoid these cyber attacks and all. I think um, I'll end here so that the uh, learning team can translate for us and then we move on. Please go back to the to this previous slide. I mean, okay, the, okay, sorry. No, no, please, the French version. I yeah, thought to change it. Thank you. Donc, um, nous allons parler maintenant des de CIP. Il est à noter qu'il y a plusieurs CIP en dehors de CIP, c'est nice support. Et nous devons tous nous habituer à cela. Alors, ici, premièrement, nous avons le site 30 qui est défini. Et ce site définit la communication entre les, les, les stacks basés sur le web et portefeuille Cardano. Et Nana, ça peut expliquer que parfois, lorsque vous ouvrez vos, port vos portefeuilles, vous vous rendez compte que cela synchronise et vous pouvez voir euh, en temps réel l'équivalent, euh, la valeur que vous avez et l'équivalent en dollars ou quelque chose comme ça. Et nous avons également, euh, bon, je pense qu'il aussi parlé de, de CIP95 et il disait que c'était une, je sais pas, une extension du CIP30 et que cela permettait d'éviter qu'il y ait plusieurs directs par portefeuille, si je ne me trompe pas, par compte. En fait, ça permet de, 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 de protéger le système contre les, les, les fraudes dans ce sens que ça permet de contrôler le nombre de directs pour chaque portefeuille. Et donc, si je vais lire littéralement ce qui est écrit là, euh, il est écrit que ce IPA offre des fonctionnalités génériques de base pour permettre aux DApp d'interroger les informations du, du portefeuille telles que le solde de, de, du portefeuille, la connexion du réseau et les UTS, UTXOS. Je ne sais pas trop ce que ça veut dire mais pour ceux qui sont très techniques, ils vont comprendre de quoi il s'agit. Et cela est précédé par le CIP 95. Et ce CIP, euh, c'est une extension, comme je disais, de l'API du CIP 30 pour euh, permettre d'ajouter un support spécifique pour la fonctionnalité de la gouvernance. Et il est précédé que cela permet de partager les clés d'identification, comme j'expliquais, des directs entre les portefeuilles et les applications, et les 10 apps dans les applications décentralisées, afin de permettre à ces 10 apps-là d'identifier les utilisateurs qui sont euh, enregistrés en tant que euh, DREP en chaîne. Merci. OK. Um, thanks, Laurentine. So, um, you know, um, I think on the next slide, we're going to enjoy some videos. But I just want to say, I mean, uh, say this before we get to enjoy the videos that we're talking about. So at the end of this whole workshop, which uh, probably will be um somewhere, I guess, I think the very first week of August, um, we probably will be setting up um uh the water DREP um on the test net. And I will give each and everyone the chance to actually uh either delegate to it. And of course, we're going to motivate um, you know, everyone also to take up the chance of actually, I mean, uh creating their own or, or becoming DREPs, right? Even though it, it it comes with um some some form of um resources that you probably need to get, so if of course you don't have the resources, then you probably would want to delegate to, I mean a DREP, an existing DREP, so that they can vote on your behalf. And we all know that when it comes to um um Africa, uh you know WADA takes front in uh you know pushing and uh uh, uh um what is the word here um you know WADA WADA takes front in actually pushing. And making sure that uh, projects that are actually building in Africa here, you know, it's getting the necessary attention that we are getting. So obviously, when we create the water DREP, uh, if you don't have the enough resources to actually create your own DREP, then what it means is that we are going to encourage you to delegate your ADA to, I mean, the water DREP, uh, so that we can vote on pro pro I mean, proposals uh, on your behalf in relation to the CIP 1694 and then the catalyst. So that you don't get um or you are not left out, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> this uh, presentation, this series of presentation, I've actually divided it into, I mean, four main modules that we are going to look at in the in the in the next few weeks. 
So you don't want to miss out on any of them because um they are very, very necessary for you to know as far as well as far as uh the DRF stuff is concerned. So yeah, um join us. I mean um the next Thursday, so that we go through the module one, which we are going to we are going to look at. I mean, detailed um, definitions for DREP and uh, what the role really is, what it entails, and uh, even if there are any rewards that comes with it and uh, what the constitution looks like as well. So um, please don't miss out. Uh, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful having you here today, but join me once again and next, next Thursday so that we do this together. Yeah, thanks. Megan, let's enjoy the video. Okay, je m'excuse pour aujourd'hui. Comme je mentionné avant, Nous, nous allons faire peut-être une traduction pour désordonner. <rire> Il n'y a pas, par exemple, une traduction pour cette vidéo, ça serait en anglais, mais je vais mettre les sous-titres en anglais pour faciliter au moins un peu la compréhension. Um, je voulais juste souligner certaines choses que Nana Safou vient de dire, que WADA va aussi commencer notre propre DREP. Um, je voulais ajouter que je suis, je fais partie d'un DREP qui existe déjà. Si quelqu'un veut nous rejoindre, c'est un mode test. Alors, il n'y a rien, bon, comment on dit, nothing at stake. Uh, on, on accumule le test ADA et on peut déléguer le test ADA. Alors, pour ceux qui veulent pratiquer, um, uh, on vous invite à nous rejoindre. J'ai posté le lien dans le chat, um, en, en, en anticipation pour uh, l'éventuel DREP de WADA, uh, vous pouvez pratiquer avec uh, cette DREP. Um, just to add really quickly again in English, um, so Nana Safo brought up that WADA will be starting a DREP and some of the challenges, you know, with actual resources. I just wanted to invite anyone who is interested in practicing and testing it out. I am involved in uh, existing test DREP. Um, there's nothing at stake. You can actually accumulate test ADA through the faucet and practice delegating to a DREP. Um, so there's more information on that in the link that I provided. Um, it's There's nothing at stake here. Like I said, it's just test to practice. Um, so for anyone who's excited on getting involved in that um, before the WADA DREP launches, feel free to reach out to me or if you follow that link, um, you can get some more information. And if you want to actually join us um, in terms of participating, there's a form you can fill out as well. Um, but we'll play the next, there are two short videos here um, and then we'll have a uh, little bit of time for Q&A. So I will now play the videos. Let's talk about delegate okay, Megan, so I think you have to share your screen with that sound. Oh, okay. We practiced this and I thought it was sharing sound. So no one's hearing the sound? Yeah, there's no sound for now. Okay, let me try again. Mm, okay. Um, <laughs> I think my screen has frozen. Oops. I could I could share from here if that works. Okay, if you could give it a try, I'll try to sort out my side. But if you yeah. can get it up ahead of time, that would be great. Let me just try share screen. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah. yeah, yours is good. Okay. 
As an ADA holder, ever wondered who makes big decisions on Cardano development? Let's talk about delegate representatives, or D-reps. So, true governance takes time and effort. It's like trying to solve a super hard puzzle, and let's be honest, it can overwhelm a lot of ADA holders. When people get overwhelmed, they might just skip out on voting altogether. And when that happens, we get low engagement and decisions that don't really reflect what the community wants. That's where our heroes, the D-reps, come in. D-reps are like your governance experts. They are trusted members of the community, understand deeply about Cardano, and can make the right decisions on your behalf. By letting a D-rep vote for you, you make sure your voice is still heard, without all the headache. Think of it like ordering a pizza with a bunch of friends. If everyone has to decide on every single topping, it takes forever, and some people just give up. But if you let one friend who knows everyone's favorites handle the order, it's way easier. That friend is like a D-rep. D-reps vote on important proposals, speak up for the community, and keep things transparent. They make the whole governance process smoother and more effective. Think of them as a responsible and trusted friend. If they care for all of their friends, they are responsible for the final best common decision. With D-reps, Cardano's governance gets a big boost in efficiency and inclusivity. So why wait? Join the DRF workshop to learn more and help shape the future of Cardano's governance. Okay. Uh, Nana Safo, for the next one, could you add the um, closed caption just to help a little bit for the French speakers since we don't have translation? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Let me see if that works. Uh, so subtitles, right? Yeah. It's just a C, I think CC button. Ever wondered how decisions are made in Cardano? Let's talk about the big picture of Cardano's governance. Cardano's governance is like a giant group project where everyone's voice matters, but we've got some challenges. Many ADA holders don't participate because it's too complex or confusing. And we need to keep everything clear and make sure everyone's doing their part. Plus, coordinating all the different roles can feel like herding cats. Good governance is like having a great team captain for our group project. When everyone pitches in, we make better decisions together. And strong governance keeps our project running smoothly, no matter what challenges come our way. Think about it as a football match. We've got key players like stake pool operators, SPOs, D-reps, and the Interim Constitution Committee, ICC. SPOs are like goalkeepers, steadfastly holding the collective trust and ensuring everyone can move forward confidently and without hesitation. D-reps are like team captains, voting on behalf of their teammates, ADA holders and the Constitutional Committee, our match referee officials, keeps the rulebook in check. ADA holders can pass their votes to D-reps or vote directly. Every voice counts. Want to join the fun? Come to the D-rep workshop and help shape Cardano's future. Your input can make a huge difference. Be a captain of the team, a D-rep. Okay. So that is it. Uh, yeah, that is it. So I think, uh, like I said earlier, I mean, uh, next week we're going to look at the module one, which covers the rules and then the governance itself. So please don't miss out. Uh, make sure to join us. And I think there's going to uh, be a room for, I mean, our French colleagues as well. So, you know, you don't get to, I mean, hustle with uh, translations and all. Oh, it's going to be fun. So don't forget to join us. Megan, over to you. Ok, bon, merci beaucoup à tout le monde d'être venu aujourd'hui. Uh, aujourd'hui était vraiment une introduction bref. Alors, on vous invite à nous rejoindre pour les prochaines séances. Comme je mentionnais avant, on va mieux uh, se diviser uh, en termes de langue. Uh, la semaine prochaine, nous allons avoir une salle séparée pour les francophones. Um, alors, Bon, si ça vous a intéressé aujourd'hui, pour avoir encore plus de détails et plus d'informations, venez surtout la semaine prochaine. 
So I think we have some time for any questions, if anyone had any questions or feedback um, or comments. Um, thanks everyone for being here today. I know we went over a lot from all the announcements and to the actual DREP introduction. Um, but feel free to raise your hand or if you wanna just come off of mute. Monfo, hey. Hey, uh, so um, first of all, thank you Samuel for and Megan for putting all of this together. Yes. Uh, Nana Safu instead. Um, uh, it's, you know, I think it's a wonderful presentation. So my my question, I do have two questions. And the first one is about the, <laughs> the pizza example. You know, I, I couldn't really find myself into it. So maybe you could think about another example that could speak a lot more uh, to us. But this is just a, a funny thing. Um, the second one, it's just a curious question about, do you have any insight on how this, um, and I know we'll get into more details, but I just want to ask this question and clarify some things in my head. Do you know whether um, you'll be able to delegate your ad state ADA? You know, how does it work? Is it like, if you have delegated your already your ADA to, uh, let's say an SPO, um, would you be able to delegate the same ADA to, uh, you know, a DREP? Uh, is that this thing? How does it work? Do you have any insight on that? Thank you. Um. Yeah. Um. Thanks. Uh. Thanks, Manfo, uh, for the question. I think these are beautiful questions. Um, let me let me take off with the delegation part, then probably I'll come on to the the pizza part, right? So with the delegation part, uh, what is going to happen now is that uh, you know, um, SPUs, uh, I mean, have their own functions that they're actually playing in the community, and then the DRFs are also going to have their own functions that they're going to play in the community. But of course, we cannot, um, it cannot be said that uh, for each uh, person who wants to actually delegate their either to a DREP, then they should probably stop delegating their either to, I mean, stake pool operators because they also have their own functions that they are playing, right? So it is going to be the same ADA, but then there's a capability of delegating the same ADA to, um, I mean, SPOs and at the same time to DREPs so that they are all able to carry out with their functionalities. And uh, I think when we get into the reward structure, um, you know, we'll get to understand more of how this is actually going to work and, you know, how it is going to impact I mean, uh, the uh, the initiative at large. I believe that answers your question. But if you have a follow up, you can come up with please. And then let sorry, me, let me... can I, Nansafo? Can I jump in a bit? Um, my understanding, uh, in terms of delegation, uh, is that so there are like three branches of governance here. There's DREPs, there's stake pools, and then there's the constitutional committee. So it's actually um very possible for you to don't you should be delegating your ADA to a stake pool as well as to a DREP. That's right. Yeah. 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 So it's no. it's like encouraged, I would say. It, it yeah. may be even required <laughs> actually. So, so basically you, know you don't that one. Yeah. So basically you don't need to stop delegating your ADA to your I mean stake pool. To want to be part of the DREP initiative, right? Go ahead, leave it, let, allow it to, I mean, allow the delegation. Then with the DREP to, you know, you can come. And moreover, right now we are still at the test next phase. So, like Megan said earlier, there's 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 nothing to lose. We're gonna use um, um test ADA to I mean handle all of these transactions. But of course, once once we migrate into the mainnet, if there are any issues with I mean being able to delegate with uh I mean, uh, your, your, I mean, delegate to stake pool operators and also delegating your uh, delegating to, I mean, your DREP. Obviously, it's, it is going to be resolved before we even get into, I mean, mainnet. And that is why we are urging and, I mean, inviting everybody to be on board to actually help us with experience because the feedback matters a lot in terms of the development phase. Yeah. Okay. Great. And, thank, thank you. You're welcome. And then uh, with a PISA example, we are talking about, um, 
uh you know it it basically has to be with uh for instance uh let's just say um there are about um five kids in a room okay there are about five kids in a room and uh we have um a, 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 we, we have placed a pizza at the i mean at the doorstep okay and then we say all the five kids should rush and go and pick up the pizza obviously what we are going to see is some sort of accident there's going to be people struggling to actually everybody wants to get the pizza right but then what, when that happens, it means that there's going to be um shakes in the governance uh, system. But then when we say that, okay, there's a pizza at the doorstep, right? Among the five of you, nominate one person that you believe can actually go and pick up the pizza. To go and pick up the pizza and then come and share it for you guys. So they get to nominate one person. The person goes to the doorstep, picks up the, the, the pizza, and then comes back to them and then share the pizza for them to actually get it. So the difference here is that... Uh, because they are nominating one person to go and pick it up, right? There is very less chance of the pizza getting scrambled or even destroyed. But once they are all going to struggle for it, there is a very high chance of the pizza actually getting destroyed and even some of the some, somebody not getting some to even eat. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I think there's going to be a lot more um, examples in the presentations in the in the in the coming weeks. So, you know, you might want to stick around. I think. Oh, can I, I think Mamfa's problem was with pizza, and it should have. We should have our own African food analogy. Well, uh, no, it's just something more contextual, you know. I, you know, yes, just yes. thinking of pizza. Not everybody yeah. knows how it it goes, you know. Yeah, so, okay, okay. That, that's, that's, that was that's it. A, yeah, that's a beautiful point. I'll, I'll work around it um during the presentation. I'll, I'll I'll come up with a more contextual example to actually make it easy for people to understand. Thanks for. The feedback as well. Yeah, good feedback. Um, no, this is exciting. I think, you know, as we mentioned, probably more questions will come up as we get into the weeds. Um, the next few sessions will be much more in depth. So definitely um, encourage everyone to join. Um, okay, so Megan, I, I just want to say that sorry for interruption. Um, I just want to say that first, uh, Nana Safo, thank you very much. Um, it's been a great presentation. Um, uh, you're on top of what you do, and uh, it's good. Uh, thank you, Laurentine. Thank you, everybody. Um, but Nana Safo, if there are more questions, time is up. I think Megan was just wrapping up. Um, there could be more questions that people do not get the opportunity to ask. Um, ahead of next week, if you don't mind, put your uh some mail or maybe a social media handle so that people probably want to contact you for further questions um ahead of next week. That would be great. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. So I'm putting my email in the chat right now. You can send me an email with your question and then I'll I'll answer you before next week. Or better still if you want you can just uh no, I mean let let's go it this way. I think that that will help everybody. So just send me an email with your question, probably with a title as uh, um DREP educational program hyphen WADA. Then uh, your question follows in the in the main body. Then I'll I'll respond to you. Thank you. All right. Yes. A big shout out to Laurentine. Thank you so much for being here today and helping with translation. Um, really, really appreciate it. Um, and that concludes today's session of the WADA Forum.